Okay, we are um, Friday. Um, so, call it the last day effectively. We had a bit of water come in last night. The guys pulled up at 10 o'clock, um, I think. And this morning we had a little bit of trouble with the truck and the gen set. But we got that rolling. Then, um, Dad and I went out to grab this, the Triton. And when I got here, I had a flat tire. So I just started working on the tire when he called up and said that we've got 12 camels up to the north of here. So he said there's no rush to get to them. They're ambulating along nicely. But Ethan and Dylan are now also on their way up. Hopefully they're not that far behind me, but I'm making my way in that direction. And I've got the wedge tail with me. so that I can drop and bleed these camels if the guys are too far off. So let's um, see what camera gear I've got and um, see what, what sort of footage we end up with. No scope cams, they, um, they get in the way a lot. So we're just gonna work with what we've got. I think that's them. I'm just going to go blade them. You'll land at Bullock. I'll blade these. I'll pick you up.
G'day folks, just a quick interruption. If you're enjoying the content and want to support the channel, you can grab some awesome merch like the hats and stickers from A&M Colour Corrections and Signage. Every bit of support helps and I really appreciate it. The link is in our description and in our channel description. Cheers. All right, we're back out in the zone um, where, where we've whacked them in a nice little group. I went and picked that up from the airstrip, which is only oh, three k's away. So he's sorted. Ethan's on site now. They had a flat tire to change on the way up. So um, let's uh, go see how we look. So, how's your morning? <laughs> <laughs> it has been entertaining to say the least. So, what's that about? You know, you've got two useless offsiders. <laughs> well, one always keeps the door open, and well, the other one just makes sure there's no juice in the tank. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, look, I, I got you some camels this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. But uh, we still got a truck running at seven degrees, is a slight problem. It's uh, working its way down though. Yeah, it was on 7.9 when it went past. Well, the humidity, RH, is like 79%. Yes, yeah, it's so that's, was so. it's going to be making him work a bit more. Yeah, yep. But anyway, that's all right. It's what it is. It'll catch up eventually. Yep. While you're um, we'll getting put... into it, someone's question from the other day. Yep. Because this is a beauty. We did a live and um, now we've had the questions come Oh, through. yes, yep. So you said about the temperature of the meat being good and bad, like right. something that can work against you. Yeah, so camel meat, and I don't know why, maybe it's because they live in the desert, but if you, for example, stack a heap of quarters like we do on a vehicle, if you did that exact same thing with either horse meat, uh, donkey, cows, uh, cattle, sorry, and uh, sheep, pork, etc., anything like that, mutton, pork, etc., it sweat, it goes off green, it goes green around the bone very quickly, around the marrow, uh, around any thick point, it goes, just, just turns instantly, but yet, with camels, you've probably got three or four times the longer time frame that you can play with it, have it hanging, and get yourself time to get back to your truck, skin it, break it down, before it all starts to turn, um, or sweat or anything bad at all, where it works with you, where if, if it did, if it was like every other domesticated livestock, you wouldn't be able to do this simple. It just wouldn't work. So, yeah, thankfully, it's on our side. Otherwise, we wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be able to make it viable at all. Now, um, on the question of viable, although when you're sharpening knives, you're really in the zone. So yeah, <laughs> you're right, you're right. Um, on the question of viability, like of this as a market, we only do this, you know, a couple of times. We do it during a certain time of the year for the environmental challenges. But do you reckon there's some economical challenges to the camel as well? Yeah, there is. Because uh, from an e economical point of view on getting them to a human consumption level, that's what you're meaning, isn't it? No, no, even just like, on the, the pet meat world. Well, yeah, to, to make it safe, to keep it safe, we need to be only harvesting this time of year, purely because the endospicing level is uh, very low because it doesn't flower and, uh, and 
competing against flies, competing against heat. This is the, the only viable time of the year. But as well, it butts in with you mustering too. <laughs> well, so does so the rain. A du yeah, <laughs> double catch. But uh, yeah, hands are a bit tired, but we've got to go what we get, what we uh, are given. Yeah. Okay. So how, how is it working? Because people want to make it work. Yeah. So Ethan wants it to work. Want it to work. That's the yeah, biggest thing. We want it to work, and. I don't think any of us are making a fortune out of it no. <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. I don't get paid for this. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so it, it's really to get out there so people can see and understand that that there is this asset out there. It's a bit like a lot of things. You've got to get numbers. It's got to be to be economic. Yeah. So yeah, I agree as well as like none of us want to see waste. No, you know, that's like, it. That's like when I started with boar meat, like took three years to get it up on under five hundred feet, and now it is my biggest domesticated livestock seller I've got. Where camel by next year, this might be it might be the biggest. Yeah, it, it is. It is slowly taking over. Yeah, and this is uh, so we had some friends over from Zimbabwe, and they found it just so so hard that. Yeah, yeah, they just found it so so hard that we'd drop and leave the meat there. Oh yeah, and people what? over there starving. Yeah, when we're over there, I saw them. You know, an animal was sick; it had anthrax, and they killed this thing and butchered it. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, yeah. Des desperate. Yeah, and they say here uh, that it's not fit for human consumption. You know, oh, anyway. Um. This has been the most challenging bit of the flying. Well, not flying, as in the flying bit, but keeping an eye on them. Yeah. In this country, they just blend in. Even looking over here, if you don't know where they are, you can easily overlook them. And then trying to spot them. Well, the white beak was very easy to spot than mine. <laughs> oh, you're hopeless. <laughs> We've got to try that uh, disco ball. Yeah, yeah I, that definitely. Would be... I was actually tempted to paint the top that same colour as a plane. But just yeah. to make it easy to spot. Yeah, yeah. Either, we're, yeah. Your suggestion of a flashing orange light too wouldn't be bad, I don't think. It might, Especially in these sort of days, but we didn't get any of these days, did we? No, no, no. The Most of the time it was just plenty of sun and the glare was against us. Yeah, yep. So with the sun on them, you can get them as you go round once you got, and you can pick them up on that angle. Here today, it didn't seem to matter what angle I was on, it was, it was difficult. It might have been, well, everything looks so much fresher because of the rain on it. And for some reason, even these laying down, you can't even see them. Yeah, yeah. And they, they'd go into the bush and they'd come out at a different angle. Yeah. Be sort of straining and looking and thinking, what, yeah, yeah, they're going quick, to go to there. Yeah, and, how quick they turn, though, and go turn a 90 on you. So we've had two turns here. They were headed towards the west, then they headed north, and then they turned back to the east, and then they went southeast. Yep. But no, it's worked out well. Oh, I, I don't know what the problem was. I rocked up and they're laying down ready. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing yeah. to worry about. <laughs> yeah, you just got to dial that up each time. Yeah, right. <laughs> so we end up with 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 and 8. That's not bad. Not a bad effort. No. Not a bad effort at all. Well, that day on the Sunday, we could have... Uh, <laughs> we, oh, we, we, <laughs> we'd be done by now if we managed to keep the bulls. Oh, we're, All the primals out of them. If we'd had four of us on that day, then... Oh, uh, it would need needed four of us, to be fair. Well, we'd take, and also to if we'd had to double the load. Well, we couldn't double oh, the load yeah. by any stretch. We we would have got about six or 700 kilos of boneless out of them. Like, yeah. We, well, to be, we might have actually filled a tub. Yeah. So... Yeah. No, good. Not a big udder on her, but the other one might be a little bit better to see, but... No, we'll try the other one. The other one's got a lot. Of, she's bagged it right up. The other one. Up the front again. Yeah, please, mate. That'd be great. Okay.
Hey, perfect day for doing this though. Oh, and we haven't got any of the little budgery gars. Yeah. Bug nuts. How would you go if you took the whole neck? Oh, I would. It would. It actually would sell well, I think. But uh, something for problem a is it's just yeah, it's just trying to um, actually handle it in the truck without blocking airflow. But another thing to try and deal with in there. Yeah. yeah. At this stage, it's just not worth the worth the effort. It's too much effort involved in it, dealing with it. Yeah. Like ideal world, you take the these ones and smaller. Yeah. They, they'd be they'd sell like hotcakes. We sell a lot of like uh, uh, mutton necks, beef necks, stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Where's the tubs? Tim, could you grab one of those tubs out off the back there, please, mate? You want me to give up my day job? <laughs> <laughs> but add it into uh, a part of your, what do you call it? Part, part of my own? repertoire. Yeah, your, your, your resume. <laughs> it's so much more efficient when the pilot gets down here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, at least you're a part of it. You probably prefer that than having to fly back and wait. Or I whatever. Can <laughs> Come here and then bombing them up and going and sitting somewhere for quite some time is. Yep. Not high on the entertainment level. I can I can imagine. Maybe you throw the meat in on the back. <sighs> yeah, on the back, mate. So we'll throw it straight in there. Oh. It's quite a bit comes out of the neck. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the bulls are the winners. I ain't gonna lie. What do you reckon the difference in the yield between the cows and the bulls is? Oh, double? Yeah. Yeah, the double. Oh, you do get very big cows that are worth it, but then you get very big bulls too. Yes. So, in the end of the day, it's, uh, bulls are better, less fat trim. Yeah. But they are just so much more punishing when it comes to the uh, field dressing them like this. The, the hump? Do you reckon there's anything in. Uh, um, I think, like, eventually there'd be soaps and candles and stuff if it was to go down here with something and lime, but for us in pet food, there's Dogs nothing. love it. Yeah, the problem is I don't think... Oh, that, she's got a wound Look at there. that. But I think she... Uh, for us, though, for, for pets, we got to keep everything lean. So every bit of fat that's in these, we trim everything out. Every bit of it. So we're working on about 85, 90% like, visual lean. So, like, we trim everything. Well, they used to tell us with the sheep dogs, make sure we had about 40% fat. <laughs> Yeah, it's not, it's not good for dogs. A little bit is okay for hard-working dogs. Yeah, but okay. But they're still better off to have a lean meat than they are fat. It just builds up around their internal organs. It's not good for them. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So, yeah, it's a bit like us as well nowadays. We, oh, exactly. We, we can't take as much in as what we used to. Yeah, we, yeah <laughs> we'd, be, we'd be skinny as anything and you'd, we'd be classed as still overweight. During a muster, I can drop off six to eight kilos. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be surprised. Yep, I lose a few when I come up here. Just come back and want to die, though. <laughs> yeah, but, but you're you're looking a lot better than when you arrived. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, like death warmed up now, pretty much. No, 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 no. You know, you're looking lean enough, and you know. <laughs> I was I was a bit concerned when you got here. That yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> yep. I I, I need to. Uh, I need to fatten up over summer, get ready to get here, I reckon. Yeah, you got to be like the camel. Yeah. Lay a bit in and... <laughs> yep. Bulk up. For those in the beef world, they'd call it the porterhouse. That wouldn't be bad, Look John. Look at that. that. That just... That's great. And so this is make a beautiful casserole coming here out of the neck. And that's your patty whack? Yep. My good whacking stick. Yep. Another cow? Yeah, mate, yep. by the colour of her joints. She's actually quite an old one. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's quite grey in there, yeah, but she's yeah. not very big. Just take your glands out. Yep. 
So the glands yep. out. Yeah, we take them out while they're hot. Yeah. They don't get missed then. And the hind quarters we take out when we break them down and when they're hot and they go in the cool room going up. Yeah, it's definitely old. Barely any fat camel uh, hump to her. Yeah, yeah. Be interesting to know if there was an easy way to age them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they can live to like 70 years old, apparently. Uh, I thought about 50 in the wild and then, you know, domesticated, but I could be quite wrong with my... Oh, I'm not sure either. I, I, yeah. It makes sense, I suppose. Hey, you were talking about an air knife the other day. Yeah. yeah I'm thinking about giving it a run, setting it up on the truck when we're skinning down. So you've got to have air, compressed yeah, air? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get one mounted on the truck anyway. Right. Just for, so I've got, <coughs> obviously... So no good for this? Not for this, no. But uh, in the truck when we break down, I'm, I'm hoping that'll work. Yeah. So... So what's the advantage of the air knife? Oh, there's less... We're not having to sharpen up knives constantly. Yeah. And physically, there's a lot of pressure on your wrists when skinning them down. Yeah. With the air knife... Because it's self-cutting, yeah. you're just literally going up and down with it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I've never used one, but I know of them getting used in abattoirs and stuff, so I wouldn't mind. I'm always open for giving stuff a go anyway. If I fail it, it's all right. Yeah. Give it a crack, and then I'm going to give it a go. I do a lot of cattle as well, so I'll probably start using it on them as well. Mm -hmm. So the air just rotates the blade? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's just an air tool is all it is. I wonder, um, I wonder what the chance is of having one battery driven. Oh, I don't know. They might do. I just, I'm not sure how they go there because most of them are all like for uh, small abattoirs, you see. I don't know if they go cordless with like gear yet, but... So on the little ones, is it worth taking the necks and whatever? No. Should I go back now, Dylan? I'll fleece the back strap out. I'm going to go up a bit. Thanks, Cliff. No, nah, little ones aren't worth it. Like this one here should have probably a 30 40 percent more yield but i think because she's so old there's just little there yeah everything's very skinny and tough too like big difference this yep. like this is twice as tough as it should be taking it off yeah yeah. it's just because yeah. of her age and skinny cattle are similar but camel definitely go a lot tougher when they're uh, lean they're quite horrible to work with actually so as you can see that's probably only yeah, yeah, 30 yeah. mil thick compared to probably should be really 50 mil if not more. Mm. And a big bull, about 100? Uh, yeah, 120 probably, yeah. Yep. This is about as tough to fleece off as a, as a big bull, just because yeah. she's lean and old. Yeah, yeah. We actually did last night, because we were 16 and 16, we did the equivalence of Slaughtered, shot and slaughtered 16 camels and bone and processed 16 yesterday, plus went and got them. So, yeah, it was a big old day yesterday. That's a lot to do in a bloody, in a day. Well, yes. In, it was sort of the later half of the day anyway, really. Yeah. Well, just think of it as starting the, you know, you, you're working on the 12 to 12 shift. Yeah, that's right.
We're done. Yep, she's full. Yep. Total of 87 camels. All right, and um, we are talking a little bit earlier about doing another run later on in the year, yep. but we've talked a bit throughout all this video the challenges that we have with getting camels. Yep. So, so straight off the bat, <clears throat> the heat's going to be the next issue we're going to have, but with a bit of luck, we'll have a lot more camels, and we, we're going to have to lean into doing night works rather than day, whether we shoot in the evenings to get our camels on the ground to start with, work in the evening that way, and uh, bone early mornings. Uh, but we are looking at, yeah, you guys have got a shed that needs to go up and I'll give you his hand to do that. Are you still a bit of it? <laughs> yep, so on that sort of plan, what we're looking at doing is knocking up that shed yep. somewhere near the homestead here. Yep. And setting it up so we've got a concrete floor, but we've also got a chiller down at the farm yep. that we're thinking about bringing up here. Yep, yeah, 20 foot pan. So yeah, that, that'll come up and uh, We'll use that as well, we'll drop some rails in. And uh, I've got a big generator I can bring up as well and we'll give that a go. And if we have two boxes running, uh, when, when your external outside temperature is too hot, your, your unit self struggles to bring the meat down fast enough and it will get it down cold, but because it takes longer to get it cold, we're gonna out with a backlog of meat. You might only be able to shoot for two days, harvest for two days, and you might have to wait a day for it to catch back up. But if we run two boxes, nothing will slow us down then. You could have one, fully running, running its 24, 36 hours with the hanging quarters with the skin off. And then in doing so, you fill the other vehicle, the other truck, for example, and uh, then you can bone out the container box and then you could bone the truck out and vice versa, exchange them over. So that'd be ideal. That that that'd keeps up on top of the temperature and the meat quality, keeping cold. Yeah, so that's the big thing, keeping the quality because we know in summer, yeah, we can whack a lot of camels, yeah. but it's the quality of that meat Yep. at the end for the product like the Your shelf life and all well, that yeah yep. but also the customer you know yeah. the customer's a dog yeah exactly um, exactly yep we want to yep. make sure that they've got quality meat so yep. getting that cold chain up and running from up here yes. during summer is going to be quite yep. a challenge that we face yep. between that and flies as well so we're going to have a lot of competition against us with the heat and the flies there's no doubt about that and uh the, there's a definitely there's a small window to get you know such a small window of getting it correct all the way through with your flies, with your heat, getting it cold fast enough, scun quick enough. And the handling of meat, if you have one thing go wrong, we've had a couple of issues this trip. Uh, one thing go wrong, you could lose a container full like that, uh, right. especially if we're dealing with heat. So putting this little bit of a plant, temporary plant, yeah, or yep. you know, pseudo plant in place, that's gonna cost us a fair bit, like in effort, but also financially. Oh, absolutely, yeah. We're gonna be putting a fair bit out. <laughs> yep. But we sort of believe strongly enough in turning the camel into something profitable that, yep. you know, instead of just seeing the absolute waste that we do, like you've had that success with the um, the bores down Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So that took about three years of, of doing our bores, which are uh, from from uh, of piggery. So they're not a wild boar. They're not they're not wormy. They're, they're actually in, in mint condition and uh, healthy animals. So it took about three years to get it off its off uh, up and going more or less, and uh, get you know getting customers onto it. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're two years in now running with a camel and it is definitely on its way. Like it will end up, I think by this time next year, it'll probably be our highest uh, selling frozen meat, uh, apart from kangaroo. Uh, I believe it'll be the biggest one there. And being that's the only thing organic that you can buy for your dogs, directly meat wise, uh, in chunks and mints and jerkies, all that sort of stuff. Well, you, you can't get it better. And as long as we can control it, uh, processing up here to keep it cold, keep its fridge life. Uh, and last thing a customer wants to do is throw their meat out and have it turn within a, within a day. Yeah. You know, they still got to be able to defrost it and still be fine for a week to sit there um, in their fridge with no issues. And then, yeah, you also got the other end of it too. Like if, if we don't keep, uh, you know, keep the quality up with the fat all trimmed out, the bull dust out of them, uh, anything like that, extremities out too, you can put customers off that way as well. So there's, there's a lot of, factors that can cause us a, a lot of problems if we don't get it right. And so this effectively is sort of the start of pushing it towards a human consumption product. Yeah. But well, in a, a light way, let, we're going to prove that we could slaughter them out here, yep. bring them into a, a plant up here and have them well, not quite box ready, yep. but well on our way to proving that concept out. Yep. So we've been the, tossing ideas for a while. We've got, you know, between you and, and, and dad, Tim as well. and. We've got a few ideas running that we can we can make this work. There's no doubt about it. 
Uh, it's just financially a lot of money involved uh, and a lot of risk too. Um, there's a lot of risk coming up here the first time for me, especially and then even last year and this year, like I only take one one mistake to happen and you didn't make it worth your time. But uh, we are working towards it and it's really the funds that come down to it at the end of the day on how far we can really keep going with it. But this is definitely early stages of proving we can make it work. Yeah. Well, it, we've, you're proving up the market. You know, people yep. want it. We've got people commenting, saying they want to try camel meat for human consumption. Yeah. Yep. Um, because we're bringing a lot of awareness to it. But we've had a crack at, you know, getting some financial support on this. But it always seems to get completely and utterly shut down. Yeah. So if there are people out there that want to sort of help us prove this up and get it to the next stage, we are more than willing to work with you on that. Absolutely. And um, we might even try a, a GoFundMe or something to make sure that the plant we get up here, Yeah. You know, we've got the gen set running at the moment, but we've got plenty of sun up here. Yep. Um, we are big, big fans of reusing you know, old equipment, so like solar panels that are coming off houses and stuff. If people want to locate those and help us to work on building a power plant for the chiller, yeah, that that'd be awesome. Because... Yeah, that's that's right. And, and we need a structure over it to help reduce the temperature uh, temperature as well, like a shed, for example, dome shelves, that sort of thing. And keeping all of our uh, yeah, all our fridges and cool rooms cold. That's the that's the biggest thing. Is we can all go pear shaped real quick as soon as something goes wrong with our fridges. Yeah, no, it'd be um, pretty awesome yep. to um, get the whole plant up and running, but also it gives us opportunities to train young people, yep. regional people as well. Yeah, and yep. also Absolutely. in some way, you know, we're a bit tentative about bringing people, you know, viewers out into it. But if we are sort of developing some skills, yeah. Um, so I've just worked out why my phone's buzzing. <laughs> Dylan sending me all his photos. <laughs> Oh, that's why. <laughs> yep. Well, um, now that Dylan's de uh, learnt being up here, you know, like, yeah. he's, he's absolutely loved he's, it. He's been the good apprentice. Yeah, he has been. Yeah, he's keen as mustard. He's got enough rocks in his head to come back. Hey, Dylan. <laughs> so, yeah, that's um, stuff we can always look forward to, you know, developing yep. as well. Yeah, working forward, yeah. Giving people sort of the potential to be out in the field on the country and, well, appreciate some of the awesome nature that we see out oh, here. Yeah and yeah. um work on reducing waste yeah like, that's right that's if we right. can make this something that we've done out of you know old shipping containers that people have found old bloody um even secondhand batteries but secondhand solar panels and everything yep. instead of it going into landfill we it's can like easy. Yeah, that's right put it together yep. and have a like what, what are we calling it organic free range yeah. carbon positive Yep. Because every camel that you kill, you're actually doing good for the environment. That's right, that's right. Yep. Um, you know, have a real impact on the sustainability of the land and also yep. help out the businesses out here. Yeah, exactly. Give people work, jobs, employment. Yeah. So instead of just the uh, the cowboy slaughters. Yeah, that's right. Yep. We yep. can... Um, I mean, what are we doing? About 10% of what you annually cull a year, we're using into this. Yeah. And... 10% um, is better than 0%. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. It's a very <laughs> small start, but... Certainly 10% is better than bloody nothing, that's for sure. So, yep. yeah. No, well, thanks everyone for joining us on yeah, thanks, this, um, this episode where we've had a, a lot of bits and pieces, but um, hopefully it's starting to tie together the story, but also the fact that we need support to get this industry going. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, yeah, the commitment to quality and also reducing waste is um, yep. incredible. Key. Absolutely, yeah. yep. All right, Thank well, you for your time, Jack. Thanks, Ethan. Thanks for looking after us as always. <laughs> And the entertainment. And uh, anyone wants to uh, try out some strong coffee to send to Ethan so keep working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nothing like good coffee. Yeah.